Well, hello, 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 and welcome to another Grayscale Gorilla Live show. How are you today? Hope you're doing well. Chad Ashley, how are you today? Well, hello, hello. I'm doing good. Uh, getting a weird echo here. Let me see if I can figure out what that is all about. That might have doing... been me. I, I had my own YouTube video blasting, and I just shut it off. Oh, rookie mistake. I know, I know. I had rookie. to make sure we're live, you know? Screwed it all up. <laughs> we need we need like a, a crew. We don't have any. <laughs> we don't have any. It's just us. Yeah, we, we need this person to yell, hey, uh, can you turn up my mic a little bit? Yeah, thanks. Okay, for, for, thanks. Perfect. Turn me up in the headphones. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How are you? Uh, happy end of the year, and uh, welcome to yet another Gray Skill Gorilla live show. Last one of the year. We are excited to uh, celebrate the entire year here, uh, and also your big win. So do us a favor. Let us know where you're uh, texting in from <laughs> or commenting in from, and also let us know your favorite uh, piece of work that you worked on this year. What kind of thing was it? Was it an animation? Was it motion design? Was it product design? Was it a personal project? Was it learning how to 3D scan your own face? Put it in um, uh, the comments here. Let us know what you've been working on. Um, I saw Cody in here, by the way. I want to say hi to Cody. I, it's so good to see you in here. And we're so excited to talk a little bit more about some of the work we've done uh, uh, with with um, Cody and some of the some of the team over there. So stay tuned as well. Um, who do we got here? Vitas, good to see you as always. Thomas, Robbie, what's up, Robbie? Terji, Nate from Grand Rapids. All right, got some Michigan going on. Greece, good to see you. Oh my goodness, my my Grayscale Gorilla folder. How many gigs? That was a lot of gigs. I just saw it go by. That's hilarious. I haven't added it up yet, um, but the quality of all the assets have been uh, has been getting so insane and um the hard drive space is also adding up well, let me tell you a little something too we're going to be showing you some uh behind the scenes of the latest uh release here at grayscale gorilla we just uh launched over 400 uh new assets in the library uh we're also going to show you some behind the scenes uh on how this stuff was made so chad and the team's been really hard at work making beautiful assets we want to show you some behind the scenes talk a little bit about it then of course we want to show you um in uh, in the 3D apps that these is, these are all compatible with. We're going to show you some Cinema 4D, some Unreal, maybe some Blender. We might get to that too, um, but stay tuned. Um, what is up, Rayco? Johnny's here. Oh, the CIA is here. Watch out. Wait, the CIA just said that we're putting out bangers. That's good. Well, at least we're on their radar in some way. You know, I you want to be on the good side of the CIA. <laughs> That's right. Like, I'm just, I'm, is anybody else shocked that the CIA just said the word bangers like i feel like that's pretty awesome <laughs> robbie's asking if we release any uh unreal 5 material kits yes um everything in the grace Gorilla library is now fully compatible with ue5 i want to say 5.1 and up 5.2 we have a compatibility page just for you guys and just for me apparently to remember uh, i've been using 5.2 and 5.3 so i know it at least works with that so uh if you're a member go grab it cody's got to hop on a meeting um, yeah, try to get oh, stuff nice. in the chat. That's awesome. <clears throat> so good to see you, Cody. Thanks for stopping by, man. Hope you're well, bud. Have a good holiday. <laughs> CIA certified. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, change the homepage. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, I'll wait a few extra minutes for everybody to get in here. We're going to jump right away into some screen shares and some behind the scenes. Um, uh, keep it coming. And do us a favor. If you're here watching on YouTube, click that thumbs up and uh is it the bell no mostly comment and hit the thumbs up because here's what that does it tells youtube we're live and it tells youtube there's people here watching live and it will remind people that click the remind button and all that so if you happen to be watching on youtube you know do the do the thing help us out let us let let us know if you know somebody out there uh a plus member or somebody in the 3d community that wants to hang out with us let them know we're live um all right chad uh where do we start today? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna let you drive a little bit. What do you, what do you think? What should we get started with? Well, I mean, there might be some people here that aren't really familiar with what we recently put out. So maybe it's a good idea to either uh, walk them through that, either with the video or the blog post, and just kind of like, you know, just keep 
get people up to date on what we just put out. Or if you want to answer some questions really quick, we could do that. Ah, uh, let's do exactly that. So get your questions ready. As always, we always do a Q and A here. Um, but here's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to turn off the, the chat just for now. And we are going to uh, clean up my desktop. It is it is messy. I don't know about your desktop out there in internet world, but uh, I could definitely clean mine up. I, don't right, wanna, I definitely do not want to see your desktop, dude. It's going to trigger me <laughs> so bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. Okay, I, I, I think we're clear. I, I think I cleared it. Okay, so uh, let's do this. Let's go full screen. Now we pop up in the corner and I think we can get rid of us like that. Now um, let's do all three of those really quickly in a row. So um, if you're new to Grayscale Gorilla, first of all, welcome. We've had quite a, uh, a, few, a lot of you join over the last couple months. Uh, welcome. If this is your first live show, welcome. We do try to do these uh, at least quarterly, sometimes uh, every month. And um, we want to just break down what we've been working on, what we've added to Grayscale Gorilla Plus to, to help our members get more work done, help you guys create more beautiful 3D work, and let you do it on budget and on schedule so that you're not making everything from scratch and you get to use assets like this stuff right away in your 3D app. So uh, the first thing Chad mentioned was our brand new online library. So this is our online library. You can go to 3dassets.gracegogorilla.com, even if you're not a member, to search it and go look around. Once you're here, you can see that we have uh, some new assets. This is our latest collection, which uh, includes a lot of handmade assets we'll be talking about. And you can scroll down and you can click through on any one of these collections. And once you do, it'll take you to the page where you can see all the assets inside of that collection. And then, of course, if you're a member, you can, uh, well, even if you're not a member, you can click on it, see a full res version, see a close up version, and even all the maps that come come with it. And of course, when you're a member, you could just download the asset and it goes right onto your hard drive. You could import it using our one of our brand new importers for uh, Unreal Engine, uh, Blender, and Houdini. And of course, if you're a Cinema 4D customer, you have all this right inside of your Grayscale Gorilla Hub. You could just download it straight in the cinema. So, um, Chad, what's your what's your favorite collection here off of the home page? Oh. I know it's probably hard for you to pick. You you know, it's kind of like picking mm, your favorite yeah, kid or something. Exactly. I, my favorite, I, I really I love, love, love the uh the ceramics and the plasters. Like those are my two favorites. Um I think it's something because like I've wanted really good plaster uh materials for walls and just like you know, photo sets and stuff like that. I've wanted them for a really long time. And there's been like no good ones that look hyper realistic and interesting. So we partnered up with a local uh, plaster craftsman here in the Chicagoland area. And we, we basically created four by four giant panels of plaster completely done by these experts. And then we brought those into our studio and we scanned them. So we got displacement, normal, roughness, base color. It's all captured perfectly to give you the most realistic plaster you have you can find, basically. it's They're yeah. really, really, really good. I saw the big 4x4 four four sheets at the office. And right before you scanned them, I was like, these are going to look incredible. So, of course, you got our little you know, preview here, but these are fully tileable. They work super well uh, as backdrops. I've already been using these as little back backdrops. They give a ton of little texture um, and even look good on like, you know, abstract objects and stuff like that. So I really love these. I have the um, panels if you want me to go get one <laughs> and show, the, show people <laughs> what they look like. Yes. All right, hold on. Ab Kill time absolutely. while I go do that. Yeah, all right, kill time. I'll show you my favorite. So um, obviously the the pottery models, I love these. These are super, super cute. Um, I've been using the heck out of these. So we also added a ton of new models in the latest collection. So again, all of this stuff you're seeing, if you're a Plus member, you can download and use right away. Um, and if you're here and if you're new, we also have this free collection. So we've never done this before. Something I wish we said earlier in the last live show, um, which is we have this free account. So if you've ever wanted to try our assets and really see the quality of them and use them in your 
uh, scenes before you become a member or you, you just want to make sure it's all compatible with the 3D app that you use, you can come here, make an absolutely free account, and you also get access to the importers. And all the importers uh, you could use in um, uh, Unreal, Blender, and Houdini. And of course, if you're in Cinema 4D, we even give you a scene to test all these out in Cinema 4D. Um, right. So we got uh, all of a little taste of everything in here. So we got you know some surface imperfections. We got the gobos. Uh, we got H some of our favorite HDRIs. In fact, this modern industrial 10 we use all the time. So we we put it in here for free so you can see the quality of all this stuff. Um, Okay, let's All right, let I me get it. you on screen, Chad, so you could show these giant panels that we captured. Uh, all right, let's let's turn that off. I'm. Can we can we zoom in to Chad? Let's see what. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's way <laughs> it's in the background. <laughs> we is gotta get you a light in there. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a little dark. <laughs> My dog is really curious about what the hell's going on. Oh well. Oh wait. Bonus points. You got a dog in frame. Okay. Now we're good. We're gonna keep you widescreen if the if uh, if the dogs be hanging out. Yeah, he's just chilling. Yeah. So this is just one of the panels that we had made, and we you know would go there to check on the on the creation of these to make sure you know they're kind of capturing the different st sort of like trowel marks and all. There's like a, a bunch of different ways that you can uh affect plaster for different you know treatments and so we've got a bunch of like different styles that that are pretty typical that you would find in like your house or whatever but yeah we these are this is just an example of one of the panels that we had made and that we scanned and it was it just turned out so good it's like i don't know let me let me get if I, I can move it closer if you want to see some of the texture yeah the detail on these turn out really really good and because they're so big we were able to capture them at super high resolution. Um, this is partly why some of those hard drives are filling up. These plasters are super high detail. So you could really zoom in on them. This they have this heavy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hurt myself. Above your head, above your head. All right, I don't feel like like breaking my back live on the internet. Yeah, uh, that's fair. The uh, So highly encourage you if you haven't checked those out. We did have a couple questions I can answer very quickly. Um, Let's go, let's see if I could click back into here. And I, oh, no, now it's just me. Hold on. And then we can turn chat on and try to get him in here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, can you make it split screen again? Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, so we got a question. One says, are these available in the hub? So yes, everything that we just released, uh, including everything all year, is inside of the Cinema 4D hub. If you uh, use our Cinema 4D plugins and all that stuff, it'll deliver just like you're used to. Um, if you wanna use our stuff in any other application, um, so something important to know is all of that stuff downloaded through the Cinema 4D hub is specifically created for Cinema 4D, for Arnold and Redshift and Octane and on top of that, if you want to use any of our assets in any other 3D application, you do need to re-download them from this online library that I was just showing you. So in fact, let's just head on in here. So if you want to use our assets in anything uh, other than Arnold, uh, Redshift, and Octane inside of Cinema 4D, so even if you want to use these assets in V-Ray inside of Cinema 4D, you can download them from our online library right here and uh, use the importers, if we, if we have it for your application, to assemble those um, materials right inside of your uh, application, and you're good to go. And if we don't have an importer, these are PBR and FPX and ready to go for you to just pull into any app that you're used to and do a, a typical PBR flow or just import as FBX or HDR, EXR, okay? So uh, I saw a couple questions about that. I wanted to clarify that up front. Um, and also answer Nick, who's trying to use the same materials in Unreal, and it doesn't seem to be working. So you do have to re-download uh, if you want to use these in other 3D applications. Um, all right. So all right. So here we are. Uh, let's take a look at a couple other collections here. Um, the wrinkled papers are really, really interesting because this is one of those extra little things that 
uh, Chad and the team worked on that is so powerful. So you can add these uh, displacement maps essentially um, to any material. So that that goes with the watercolors, with any of the new paper materials, with any of our old paper materials. Um, you can add this on top of it inside of your node system and get true wrinkles and displacement uh, in any of your objects. So. Um, yep. Chad, did, did you, you have anything else to add to these? Because these are, I think, really powerful, and we didn't get to talk to talk about them enough. Yeah, we when we did, so we put out, we'll talk a little bit about this later, but we did this whole set of handcrafted uh, paper materials, like, com, like just very, very amazing paper materials. But, you know, we scan them all, and they're, they're flat, so it doesn't necessarily always, like, feel like paper. So we had this idea of capturing just a separate set of papers that are just wrinkled so that users could take the displacement and the normal from the papers that you have on your screen right now and mix them into other paper, uh, like craft papers. And so it, 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 it's like a, a great way to get more out of your paper materials. And sometimes you don't need like a perfectly smooth paper. You just need like a subtle wrinkle. And, you know, with this sort of control, you can just like, you know, get, get in there and make it as subtle as you want. But, it, we did some pretty heavy research and we couldn't find any place that had captured and scanned actual paper wrinkles and folds and all the nuance that goes along with that. So we're, we're really stoked to have, have that sort of thing in our library. Now, I wanted to also mention while we were here, the alpha papers, but I'm forgetting where those are. There's so much stuff. Now. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if you just, yeah, they're there at the, I just saw them go by at the bottom or you can just search. Oh, uh, here they are. Yeah, there you go. Um, so a lot of times when we're creating assets, we'll come up with ideas for extra stuff around those assets. Like I said, we did craft paper and then we're like, oh, let's do wrinkles. And then we did wrinkles and we're like, you know what we really need? We, we need some paper edges. So these are actually torn. Jake over there took paper and he tore perfectly straight edges and then some that aren't so perfect. And we scanned that too. And we, you know, we captured it. So that's a, it's an opacity map that you can just plug right into your material to make it look like your paper's been torn. So it's just a, another great little like bonus little feature there. Yeah. The, um, th there's so many little toolkit pieces that you guys add, which I love, you know, thinking about, uh, it's not always just the raw material that makes photo real looking materials. It's these extra little pieces, right? I'm reminded of even early in our collections, we had, uh, you added the edge of the plywood. So we, we had the plywood material for like the outside, but the, if you look on the side of how plywood is made, it's all sandwiched together. Um, and so that is also included. You don't want to put that everywhere on your model, but you do want to have it on the side if you want this realistic plywood. So a lot of these assets are really thought through uh, because that's what makes them look realistic. Um, you know, just a PBR goes a pretty long way. But when you start adding these other little details, surface imperfections, the alphas, the extra wrinkles, that's where the the photorealism starts to starts. You get even closer and closer. So here's the. Uh, paper materials uh chad was mentioning and uh in fact i think this one is the the jute i'm gonna i'm gonna click on it. it's this one right here i love this one i know all the all these little metal details in here yeah that one has like this cool marble this like metallic marble quality to it and we captured that perfectly so you can even see in the in the render there of the dog on its back you can kind of see that metallic streak reflecting and it just it's just a really cool effect and yeah so these papers were like sourced from all over the world uh different artisan you know recycled paper people that just like you know mash up old paper and, and to turn it into like a pulp and create completely new paper with it and it's just it's just a, a really really cool collect that one's great it's got little bits of flowers embedded into it stems and petals and stuff so Look at all the little yeah bones. So this stuff is just like, we wanted to create a set, an entire set of like really amazing human handmade assets that will kind of give your work a little bit of that like uh, imperfect human touch. We were really inspired by uh, the Spider-Verse movies, plus, you know, just seeing all the amazing sort of like 
handmade stuff that you would see on like the hands and then mix in a little of that Etsy vibe. And we just wanted to create a bunch of assets that would make your 3D not look as 3D, I guess. Yeah, so we'll probably jump a little bit back and forth between the library and this video. So I, I did want to go through the video with you because there's so many little details in here. Guys, if you haven't seen this, uh, Chad and the team did an incredible job with this video um, showing something we've never done before with these collections, which is work with uh, artisans from uh, around the globe to bring you these. So you you saw the, um, we didn't have to go far for those plaster, uh, for those plaster ones. We have some uh, uh, American made Chicago craftsmen making those plaster squares <laughs> for you, right? Yeah. Um, but for some of these other ones, we work with some really incredible studios and some places. So I wanted to go through this and, and uh, have you talk a little bit more about it, Chad, because I know you guys have uh, spent a lot of time really uh, researching and finding who to work with on this. So uh, I think the first thing here is is some of the new ceramics. So fill me in. I'm going to I'm going to just kind of let this play no sound and fill me in with with um, this project here. Yeah, so ceramics is something that I've I've wanted to have in our library for a really long time. And I just happened to be going to NAB and hanging out with an old friend, Cody, who used to work at DK with us. And his wife is an amazing ceramicist. Her name is Steph. There she is right there. And she has this, you know, she's just really talented. And so when we were at their house, she's also like really enthusiastic about ceramics. And so she asked me if I wanted to try the wheel and try throwing stuff. And, and so while I was there, she taught me how to throw and like I was making stuff and it was just this great, like, I don't know, it just, it just felt right. And it kind of hit me like, maybe this is the partnership that I've been looking for to get ceramic materials into our library. So we had a conversation and we talked a little bit about it and then we we made it happen. So we coordinated with Steph and she basically uh, worked with our team here and we chose some amazing glazes and finishes that she put together. And we kind of like went through this whole process of like picking out uh, a palette of, of, surf, of ceramic surfaces that we wanted to put together. Then she uh, went off and created these 12 by 12 uh, tiles and this was like during the summer. So it was like a crazy heat wave in Las Vegas, which is where she's based. So if you know anything about ceramics, these tiles have to dry at a very even uh, rate. So if you don't, they can crack, they can warp. And we needed them to be flat so that we could perfectly scan them and get them into our system. So it took a long time for her to like even build all these 12 by 12 tiles and get them all, you know, finished out and then shipped over here without breaking. So it was a really interesting and fun partnership working with her, uh, picking out different finishes and looks. And it turned out really, really good. And it also helps that her husband, Cody, is an amazing photographer and he shot all of this killer behind the scenes footage of Steph doing her thing at the studio. But yeah, Ceremony, we love you. Your stuff is great. So go check them out. If you haven't heard of them, go buy some of their mugs, go buy some of, some of their stuff. They're, they're super, super awesome. <laughs> no, this, this was really cool. And I know this was a, a big project for you and the team to get this done, but I, th I think it really speaks to kind of how you think about this stuff is, you know, there, there's a lot of places to go get generic materials out there in the world. But what I love is you think about bringing the the highest end of craftsmanship and taste and and color palettes and working with other artists, even like that, like in this case, to bring stuff that we could never make. Right. Like we we, have, we can capture things really well. And you get you and the team create some amazing stuff. But this is on a we, we don't. We are not ceramic experts. We are now working. <laughs> we're not with, plaster experts. Expert we're not either. plaster experts. We're now working with plaster experts and ceramic experts to bring you guys the ultimate in detail and craftsmanship and and even even color and how these things are made. And instead of guessing how ceramic looks inside of some app, trying to make it procedurally or something, we're actually going and working with teams that uh, and and artists that do this for a living. So this is this is a really exciting. Uh, I was really excited to see you take that on and start working with these amazing artists and the results speak for themselves. Like they, they did an incredible job. And of course you guys did an awesome job capturing all this stuff. 
Yeah, they're super fun. And, and I would encourage everybody to use them, not just on your like, you know, typical mug, vase, whatever. They're really great to just make something feel a little bit more organic. So if you're doing like an abstract piece or maybe, you know, something completely weird, um, I think they really work anytime you're trying to get a little bit of that handmade vibe, a little bit of that like interesting texture and tooth. I think these materials can be used for just about, you know, all kinds of cool shit. So I just wanted to show uh, if you're out there, you want to try to use this stuff. Um, like Chad said, these these really do look really great on um, a lot of different surfaces. But if you want to try to use them actually on the pottery, we included these uh, models here. You can download these. And I like how some of them have these kind of little wiggly thumbprint things kind of built in. So this does some of the heavy lifting on making it look a little bit more imperfect. And then you add these materials, which have even more detail on it. You really get some beautiful looks. So you can grab these uh, models here. And then the materials you could find under featured and uh, right here, the handcrafted ceramics. So um, do you want me to go get one of the ceramic tiles? Well, yeah. All right. Be right back. Well, well yeah. OK, well, let me let's see what else we got here. So um, a little bit later, I'll show you some of the other stuff we launched this year. Um, we It was over, I want to say, 1,200 new assets inside of the library. So. Uh, what we really wanted to focus on this year was filling up the library with um, more things that when you searched it, you found it. Okay. And we have a lot of stuff, even from our earliest collection, like the Everyday Material Collection with some amazing woods and some amazing plastics and some of the kind of basics, the everyday stuff. Um, so if you haven't checked that out, go go look into that collection. But over the last year, we've been a lot more specific about... Um, are listening to our audience and what you guys have been building. So we have these motion design collections um, that are, you know, can be very abstract and look beautiful on kind of close-ups. Then we have these broadcast materials, which we launched uh, a couple, good, a few months ago. These are really designed for typography and just beautiful broadcast design. Um, even a ton of models and gobos to go along with that. And then of course, our architecture and product visualization. So we could dig into any of these when we uh, dive into Cinema 4D and Unreal in just a bit. Um, but now Chad's back. So let me let me zoom in here. We got tiles. Ooh, which one is this one, Chad? Is that the moon crater uh, one kind of thing? I know the product code. I don't know the actual name. <laughs> <laughs> I have the asset code because that's kind of how we do everything. But yeah, this, so cool. is, this is one of the cratery ones. Um, this is one of the kind of this teal color. But what's great is like you see all those like waves and bumps and everything like that's all in there. That's all captured. And even like the subtle detail of the, the glaze as it is darker in some areas and lighter in others. This is perfectly captured in our materials. Yeah, those are awesome. Um, so next in the video, which we'll, we'll get back to here real quick, is I think the plaster. So um, Chad showed you the final big piece. This is how big these pieces are. And we work with some craftsmen in Chicago to do, um, gosh, I don't even know the name of it. It's like typical patterns of how uh, plaster is is kind of set. And so we have a ton of these. This one's my one of my favorites, this kind of like just trowel like lines. Um, but each of these have a different purpose and are actually used in, in certain situations. Um, and again, we worked with um, uh, a local artist in Chicago to, to bring these to us. Uh, anything you want to add to this collection, Chad, before we jump into paper more? Yeah, we kind of kind of talked about the plaster. It's just it's yeah, they're, they're cool. They just they look so good. It's just we want to do more now that we kind of know now that we've kind of like done this sort of partnership. We want to do a few more of these going forward and just try to like bring some really unique textures that maybe haven't been captured perfectly in other places and bring them to our members. So we'll jump in to paper. We talked a little bit about paper. Uh, you can see we're sourcing some paper here at the studio and trying to find out which ones that, uh, you know, the team wants to capture. So, um, Chad, you want to fill that? I'll let this play if you want to add a little bit more to uh, kind of the paper process. 
Yeah. So uh, Logan, which is the woman in the in the in the left hand side of that frame right there, she handles a lot of our sourcing and and curation with this sort of stuff. So she just like scoured the globe looking for amazing, uh, you know, paper people and just like found stuff from everywhere and just brought it all here. So the studio <laughs> studio for a while was just like had paper just had paper everywhere. It was like hanging from different shelves. It was all over the workbenches. It was kind of crazy. But yeah, the paper turned out really well. And that in that render right there, you can see the, the, the paper alphas for the edges of the paper as well, which we talked about a little earlier. Yeah, I love that you could have kind of taken the shot you know, you had the paper in the studio, mm -hmm. you could have like ripped it and thrown it, you know, on the grid and taken this photo. But no, no, you recreated it <laughs> using the actual material. Why not? With the, why not? I mean, you have the so this features the wrinkles. I know the alpha, oh, the alpha translucency too. edges, the translucency, which is really shows up here in this yellow one a little bit here uh, as well. Um, yeah, and let me so, talk about that for a second, because that's actually I've completely forgot about that. So yes. most paper that you're going to find on other um, material or texture sites is just going to be, you know, the paper, maybe the normal. And there you go. But the way that we capture our paper is we backlight it. We do a pass for the base color, a pass for the normal, a pass for displacement. But then we backlight it with a giant light table so that we capture every single like grain in the paper so that our translucency is completely perfect. There's like, there's no guesswork. We're not faking it. So you can see in that yellow piece of paper, if you go back to that one, um, you see those like dark fibers, like you're actually, it's backlighting the fibers that are in the paper. Like you can't fake that. So it's just a really, it just helps the paper look so much more realistic. Oh, I see. It's showing the, what light would come through like if there's leaves in the dang paper like this one or the, like these fibers here what how how that how that would affect the translucency and solve yeah yeah time. so if you like hold up a piece of paper to a light you know like it, it you see the grain you see the pulp you see like maybe a little piece of you know whatever it is that they mashed up uh and that's all captured in our materials yeah so um i hope this gives you a little taste in how much Chad and the team thinks through this stuff because uh, it's not just paper. Like you could look at this and go like, okay, that's really pretty. Do I need paper for this next project I'm working on? We don't know, but this is the level of detail that Chad and the team brings to all of, all of these collections, trying to recreate it so that when you do need one of our assets, they just look right. They look, um, they just look go. right. You know, you you, you, yeah, exactly. Right. So I'll, um, I'll, I'll jump into, let's do watercolors, and then we'll jump in and do uh, more of a kind of a show and tell inside of the 3D app, because we got a few questions here as well. Um, watercolors. Yeah, so, so I'll, I'll lump in a paper mache and watercolor and acrylic into the same like little group of because it's very similar. We... Um, we wanted to get our hands dirty and make stuff ourselves here in the product department. So I used to do a lot of fine art back in the day. So I took the the watercolor and, you know, did a whole bunch of different watercolor washes and, and treatments. Uh, and we scanned those as well. So those are really great set of tiling, seamless watercolor textures. You can hue shift them to whatever color you want. Uh, they're really, really fun. Uh, then we did acrylic, and for that, I got some super thick acrylic paint. Like, they make, like, crazy thick acrylic paint. And I painted up uh, some very large boards to get different, you know, palette knife styles, thick brush styles, daub styles, to create a set of uh, acrylic textures that have the displacement where you could see the, the, the lines from the brush and all that sort of thing. Then... Logan uh, took the paper mache and she just knocked it out of the park. She like did the uh, the newsprint paper mache, the pulpy paper mache, and she like messed up her kitchen table for like two weeks and just made <laughs> all this stuff. And uh, it was just a blast to like one of the things I love about our approach to uh, to assets is that we get our hands dirty. Like we we are, we're touching stuff, we're messing stuff up physically, we're 
we're trying to do it uh, physically in, in real life and then bring that to our members. And it's just a lot of fun to get our hands dirty and like just get away from the computer for a second and like, you know, paint or mess something up or mess around with clay or whatever it is that we're working on. Yeah, these turn out incredible. We uh, we have a few more here and then even even more that's not in the video. I wanted to kind of shout out before we jump in to um, cinema and Unreal and show you this stuff kind of in action. Uh, I think the next one here, the flashlight gobos, um, these are, uh, you know, not in the handmade. Uh, I guess they are kind of handmade, right, in a way. Like, <laughs> the, they're, they're not as, uh, like, art school, but they're these these are really influenced by a lot of movie titles and a lot of uh, other places we've been seeing this kind of look and we wanted to bring you guys to them obviously the gobos are super popular people use them all the time we got windows and all the kind of typical ones we start seeing a lot of this look you, you want to add anything else to the to the flashlight gobos because I, I think these turned out really really cool yeah so the flashlights were tricky because it's kind of hard to capture the throw or the pattern of a flashlight. So uh, Nick V on our team came up with this rig where he was uh, shooting the flashlights into some sort of like vellum. And on the other side of the vellum was a camera. And so we're, we're, we did this like crazy rig to like capture these different styles of flashlights. And so Nick told us this story, Nick V, told us a story about he was going into uh, different hardware stores and like he brought like a, I think he brought like a piece of paper or something. If he's in the chat, he'll tell, tell you, but he's like turning every single one of them on and like looking at them in paper. And the people that were working there were like giving him these like crazy <laughs> looks <laughs> like, what the hell is this guy doing? And he doing? was like, you know, checking, oh, this one's kind of interesting. And this one's <laughs> kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, these are captured from actual uh, random flashlights that, that he purchased. Uh, so that's kind of a little funny inside story about those. Yeah, they look great, like just off camera, like almost as if your camera's holding a flashlight, kind yeah. of beam it up. Um, they look good off to the side too, by the way. You can get some real spooky, like cops looking for you stuff through the fog and little things like that. Um, but this look uh, it was super fun to kind of play with. Uh, I don't think I have that scene file open, but I was playing with these in kind of my like gobo scene, and they 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 look awesome. So this is really cool. Um, let's jump here and talk about um, the uh, these new models because uh, oh, yeah. I I think the we we didn't spend enough time on the video really going through them, but these are really high quality. I know for those of you who do product design and and want to show off uh, this kind of stuff, like show off even a label that you're working on, um, these are going to be super useful. So um, tell us a little bit more about these. Yeah, so for these, we wanted to create a pretty versatile set of like cosmetic packaging. Um, and it was really important to us and uh, Nick V, who, who on the team did the actual models, that we go above and beyond with these and really make sure that they're very workable, very easy to work with. Uh, they have all the different parts that you would expect. They've got the little straws that go down. They've got, you know, almost every single part that would be in there with the exception of maybe the internal springs of like one of the pumps, but everything else is there. In fact, if you open uh, any of the jars, like any of those like hand cream jars, there's actually a swirled cream surface in there as well. <gasps> really? Um, there's Ooh, liquid, there's, that. there's liquid surfaces also in the perfumes and lotions as well. So they're pretty much set to go like you just put your glass material your liquid material whatever your label art is the labels are all separated very easy uh to apply your own labels it's it's really you know we we're, i really want to see how people react to this sort of thing and whether or not you know you want to see us do more packaging models and so if you if you want to see more of that type of stuff hit us in the comments let us know like what kind of packaging models you'd like to see more of we'd love to hear from you yeah, let us know. You, you know, we're always looking for feedback. We're obviously always trying to make stuff for you guys. Like this entire library is here so that when you need that next product or the 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 material or the the light or the gobo or the HDRI, like that you know with confidence you could search this library and what you get is curated, it's high quality, you're not sifting through a bunch of garbage, and you know that when you see 
uh, something that is close to what you need, you can drag it in and it's ready to go. Like that's the that's the whole mission here is to help speed up you guys. Um, so if you're if if you have suggestions or you have like your favorite, let us know. You want to see more of stuff. Like it's exactly what we're trying to track down. So yeah, drop it in the comment. Even if you're watching this later on YouTube, we're reading the comments. Drop it in there. We want to see it. Um, that glass material shader is so clean, dude. It is. Look at this thing. Look at all these little caustics and little, it, this is beautiful, dude. This looks, yeah, these turned out great. really good, and they, you know, they pair perfectly with the other materials as well. So you could imagine throwing a plaster material on the wall back there, and mm. maybe you know, a pretty uh, pottery vase or something with our ceramic materials. You could make like a really cool little product scene pretty easily with our stuff. Well, let's uh, finish out the video here. Um, I forget if we added a list at the end. So here's all the new handmade stuff. This isn't even all of it. Um, we also in this uh, in this launch included, I know that there's uh, some new Happy Toolbox models. So if you go to models, uh, blah, 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 uh, I want to say stylized, a ton of new uh, models here. So definitely come check this out. Uh, we, I think last quarter we did, we did some of these uh, icons. Some of the new ones I think are the tools. Uh, there's a list somewhere I'll, I'll get. Yeah, some of these power tools. So uh, we really filled up the, the model side of things. So definitely come search for models. Um, and and these models are super great. They're, they're like stylized, but also work really well as like a lamp on the table, right? Like <laughs> as a chairs in the background, like all the stuff that you need when you need it. Come search uh, this area as well. I know there's quite a few more I'm missing. 3D printed materials. That's the one I wanted to talk to you about because I think this is we didn't it didn't really fit the handmade theme, mm -hmm. but I just love the concept of these uh, 3D materials. So first of all, let me make sure I could find them. Yeah, and, if you just uh, go to plastic, they should show up right there under 3D printed. Yeah, I guess the uh, I was hoping there's like a like a banner at the top I could show because I, I think there's a render that goes along with them. I forget. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe. they. Uh, I think they're under. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think they're under product biz. Yeah, Here we I, th go. I think so. Yeah, there okay. we go. So so obviously 3D printing has been around uh, and it does create a very unique look. Uh, a lot of people are prototyping in 3D. A lot of people have final products in 3D. And tell me a little bit more about this project because I know this has been on the team's kind of like bucket list for a while. Yeah, so we thought that it does kind of actually fit with the handmade theme a little bit because it it basically well, is DIY. like... Yeah, it's kind of like that DIY vibe. Oh, <laughs> Jake's walking over. <laughs> All right, cool. This is perfect. Thanks, Jake. So <laughs> Jake is a... Um, Kind of our resident, uh, you know, 3D printing expert, and he he like has his own printer at home and like does a lot of work and with 3D printing, and so he was super excited to put this collection together, and he brought his printer in here to the studio and he was printing out. I don't know if you can go back to me for a second, but he was printing out. He just walked over and handed me all of these all of these tiles. I think it'd be cool to show. I don't know if you can get me back on putting them up on the screen coming at you so he printed out a bunch of these of these 3d printed tiles of different filament right and then we captured each one of these so it's not that these are like oh here's some like bumpy plastic and there you go it's like no this is like captured from actual 3d printing <laughs> like we don't we don't mess around dude <laughs> like you can, uh, it's not going to really capture it. This camera is probably not going to pick it up, but like, yeah. So this is how intense we get with this stuff. Like we don't just fake it. <laughs> we make it. <laughs> hey, there's our new tagline. Wow. That's really, wow. That's a really good tagline. We don't fake. We don't, yeah, we can workshop this a little bit. We don't <laughs> fake it. We make it. <laughs> I don't know. There's something good there. All right. I need, we need your help out there. You guys are all in advertising. Come on. We, we, um, okay, so 3D printed plastic materials, and I, I think there's actually a couple more I'm missing um, that we didn't uh, jump into that are not a part of the handmade collection, but um, a ton of new stuff. 
Yeah, I'm trying stuff. to think. Let's see. No, we captured. I think we captured all. We got it all. I think we okay, covered we it all. It. Yeah. Whew. All right. So um, incredible work on this on this quarter, uh, on this launch. Over 400 new assets. If you're a Plus member, you can go download this inside of your Cinema 4D hub right now. Um, and if you um, don't use Cinema 4D and you haven't got the news, we also have our online library, which is what I've been searching here where you could download and use this stuff in any 3D application. And including we have uh, material importers for Unreal, uh, Houdini, and Blender. So uh, I wanted to spell out the uh, renderers as well because people have been asking. So we have uh, Redshift, Karma, and Mantra in um, Houdini for uh, Unreal. Uh, it works with Standard and it is working with uh, Substrate in the latest version. Um, Chad also adds, these are all seamlessly tiled. So you could scale these up and down. They're super high res. They're ready for you to go. Uh, I lost my place in my rendering. Uh, let's talk about Blender, where we support Cycles and Eevee. Uh, and of course, in Cinema 4D, you can download these for uh, for Octane, Redshift, and Arnold. And uh, even if you use other third-party renderers or use Maya or use any other app, Keyshot, all this stuff is PBR, FBX, ready for you to use in any app. So um, hopefully that uh, kind of spells it out. If you have any specific questions, hit up support or you can answer it, ask it right here and we'll we'll uh, hit, you know, try to answer it. Um, all right, let's jump into, let's see, let's see if we got any questions. Let's do this. Let's... Um, uh, let's turn this off. Let's get our the these renders look better than our faces, Chad. But well, let's do this just for a second. Um, if you have any questions, hit us up. We'll do a, a quick Q and A, and then we'll jump into Cinema 40 and Unreal, and I'll show you this stuff in action uh, inside a Redshift in Cinema 40 and in Unreal, where we could just drag and drop stuff ready to go. Um, but let me scroll back and see if there's any questions we missed. And let us know your favorite out of these, if you've used them yet, or if you're just excited to download them, let us know your favorite. And I love seeing some of these suggestions we're already getting in the comments too. So, um, all right, Joe, what's up, Joe? Thanks for coming by. Uh, Tom, thank you. Uh, all right, got the show and tell. Thanks, we got ceramic love. And... It would be uh, it would be great if the online database had recommended scale settings. I, I know that's something we've looked into as well, and something you've mentioned, Chad. It's um, coming. It is coming. Um, a lot of the a lot of times, I'll I'll reference some of the key renders that uh, are in the library to kind of judge my scale. So, three D printing, for example, uh, we have that render of three D printing, and it's kind of nice to see. Okay, well, if the if the scale of the object is really big, then those lines are actually much smaller. And a lot of times the the online library will have almost like a reference image that I, I refer to that helps me like those ceramic uh, uh, mugs render. Um, I'll kind of look at that and say, okay, that's probably roughly how they were captured. And that's probably a good starting place for things like fabrics, for things like ceramics and all that. Is there any other well, tricks to that, Jen? The trick is that we have um, we have texture physical sizes for every single one of our assets. We just haven't enabled that in our online library yet. So if there's a specific one that you want to know, like how big is this, then hit us up on our Discord and one of the team members can look it up for you. We did that, I think, last week. Somebody asked me about um, the felt and there's another one. And it's really easy for us to look that up and give that information to you. But we do plan on pushing that into the online library soon. Awesome. Uh, yeah, the Discord, uh, if you are a member, make sure you're a part of the Discord. There's a ton of Q&A and answers and um, discussions happening inside of there, helping each other out, helping other artists out, and answering some of these questions as well. So definitely head on in there. Um, and I saw another question as well about the ceramic studio. Do we have a link to uh, the ceramic studio we work with? I'm assuming we have that URL. Uh, at. Yeah, so somebody that's uh, monitoring the chat could could post that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I think it's in our our latest. I think it's in the blog post as well. If you're looking for it, 
Um, so we'll get you that one for sure. Um, I found let's it. I see can here. Post it actually. Jamie says that they've uh, renewed for another year. It'd be nice to see knitted material for scarves. Ooh, that'd be a tricky one. Like those really gnarly. I've, I've been seeing a lot of like Houdini renders like this. And some of the new dynamics in Cinema 4D do these really intricate. Oh, yeah. Knit. The really thick cable knit. Yeah. 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 That's really hard to do with a texture map because it's so volumetric. And it's so like, there's all that negative space and like, you know, it's just that type of material. I don't know if it would be possible to make that look good with just the material. Cause it really yeah. requires like geometry. Yeah. I wonder if, what, what about one thread? Like I'm thinking of your paracord materials that. Oh, like a yarn. Yeah. Like if you just had the yarn, like doing the full knitted thing would be really difficult. Um, but like, I wonder if a yarn. And then you follow one of those awesome tutorials online where you do all these crazy knitted Houdini mm -hmm. and cinema effects. If that would work, I bet even yarn it would, would be but a little tricky, but yeah, because you want those flyaway hairs, right? Because like yeah. that's what like there's just things that our brains expect to see when we look at yarn or a sweater or anything like that. And it's just those we we just are naturally looking for those flyaways. And you can't do that with the displacement map. That that would be insane. <laughs> I mean, that's not to say that you couldn't make a base material, like a yarn base material that people that could add fur or hair to, um, but it wouldn't be as like, it's not going to look awesome just like putting it on, you know, without that sort of like yeah. extra stuff. Well, let's, uh, let's head on in here. Uh, let's do a quick screen share. I'm going to show you, uh, let's get our faces out of there. So I wanted to show in action some of the new stuff. So let's start in Cinema 4D. Uh, and then we'll head into Unreal in just a second as well. Uh, and I wanted to show this beautiful scene um, that is this from Dan Zuko, right? Yep. Incredible render. I love this scene. Uh, worked with Dan, who we love his, his uh, art at, to make this vase scene. And I thought it represented a lot of the new stuff really, really well. So obviously we have some gobos, some of our famous gobos. We got some of the plaster in the background, a lot of the ceramic materials and even um i'm not sure if that's the paper i'll have to zoom in but like some cloth kind of paper look here um and i want to show you you know obviously all this stuff is drag and drop if you have the cinema 40 hub uh and you're looking for the new stuff just go in your hub go to your stock assets tab and it will show you all the stuff that you don't have installed now, I think I have all of it installed, so I don't know if it's going to show anything. Um, but right there, you'll be able to find it. And if you don't see it uh, and you haven't updated your hub in a while, um, take a look right here and make sure you're on a recent version. 1.4 is the one I'm on. Um, and if you're not seeing stuff, just go grab it from the uh, from your account. Download it. You won't have to re-download everything. Uh, it will just pick up where your library left off and all the new stuff will show up and you could click on it and download it right away. So um, that's where you can get all the new stuff. Of course, when you're in Cinema 4D, you have, uh, you have it all tabbed up, ready to go. You could also search for uh, ceramics if you spelled it right and you actually went to all, it would show up. So you could just come down here, drag and drop it on top of anything. So if you wanted everything to be this beautiful, uh yellow what is it called celadon sun i love these two mango and sun just want to use this everywhere <laughs> you could just drag and drop it on top of any of this stuff so um let's zoom in here a little bit let's see if we get a close-up and chad any any specific ones you want to call out here just so i could drag and drop a couple on here my favorite one of my favorites is lagoon um it's like, I don't know, it just has like this interesting like little sheen to it, which I really like. Um, just the the roughness, the spec just feels really interesting to me. Like, Ooh. yeah, it just has like this interesting like brushed pattern to it, which I really like. Yeah, that looks nice. Um, these lunar ones I really like. Uh, they, they have this like, obviously with the name, they have this like moon crater kind of vibe to them. Love that. Mm -hmm. Yep. All with displacement. It just ends up looking really cool. Yeah, Another one of my favorites it. is if you grab the uh, that ye the Celadon, the yellow uh, one. Yeah, that one. 
What's great about that one is that you can hue shift it really, really easily. So if you want to make that into a different color, uh, that's relatively easily just by dropping like a color correction node or something after that color and just like shift it to wherever you want. Yeah, so let's do that. Um, all right, let's let me get a live tutorial from Chad here. I got a few of them in the scene, so I'm not sure which one I'm changing, but here we are. We got our base color. Uh, so obviously the yellow is built in here and then, uh, what well, you just need a hue shift, uh, color correction, color, correct. Yep. There okay. you go. Perfect. Drag it right on top of this node. It'll automatically put it in between both. You come into the color, correct and go to hue shift and let's see which one we're changing. It looks like we're changing this, this mug here. Boom. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> It's, it's a little too intense. A little hot. We can then, probably pull the saturation down. Got to go yeah. orange, right? Let's dial in the orange. Yeah, and then uh, bring the gamma down too to get a little bit more contrast in that texture. And then if you wanted to like fly in the camera really close to it, you'll be able to see some of that. I'm not sure if the stream's going to pick it up. It's a little bit um, compressed, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure if the focus is going to follow either. I may have to... Yeah, it's probably gonna go way out. Gonna mess it all up. I'll stay. I'll stay wide. You got all this uh, displacement, and everything happening. Oh, perfect! It's lovely. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm <laughs> you gonna can see stay. all that detail. <laughs> I'm gonna stay out. <laughs> um, yeah, let's, I can. Let's, I have it in my scene too. If you wanted to, you know. Yeah, we could get a deeper dive. We could jump over. I I wanted to uh, also just swap this. If once you dial in a material. Uh, if you could hold it, this is a trick I do all the time. And I'm sure many of you know this. If you want to replace the material with that material, so in this case, I want all of these yellow sun ones to be the this new orange one I made. If you hold down option, you could just drag it into the new one and it will kind of combine those two into the new one. So I'm just going to make all these yellow ones the new orange one, just like that. Boom. Love it. Um, yeah, we could jump in. Do you want to show something, Chad? Do you have a scene open? Oh uh, yeah, if you wanted to see the detail, we could show that, or we could show something else. What it's up to you. What do you want? To, what what, do you, what would you like to do? Uh, let's go to the default Redshift scene. I did want to open this up and also say it, whether you're a Plus member or you're new to Grayscale Gorilla, you want to try out some of our stuff in Cinema 4D specifically. We have this scene file here. Uh, and it does quite a lot of things. So it lets you obviously try out a lot of our free materials, which is included right in the scene file. There's also a ton of lighting built in. So some of our favorite HDRIs are built right in here. Uh, and there's other lighting scenarios. So we talked about gobos. Uh, built into the scene file is this striped gobo, which is one of the free ones you get with a free account. But if you wanted to try the flashlight gobos out, for example, uh, you could do that. Um, you could just replace it right here in the Gobo. So I did want to open this up and show you. If you have this scene, go try this out. Uh, it has Gobos built in, ready to go. And if you've always wondered how to set up Gobos in Arnold and Redshift and Octane, go grab these free scene files and you just open it up and see how we set it up. Um, in this case, I just want to drag in one of these uh, flashlights instead of the lines and we instantly get our, that's <laughs> pretty bright. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's back up. Let's back up and see what we got. So you can see the flashlights are, are, you know, ready to go on this scene is probably not the best setup for it, but I did want to show you, you could do this with any of our gobos, uh, just drag it into here and you could kind of test it out and see what these look like, uh, in scene. So, um, let's, uh, Oh, I know what I wanted to do. I wanted you to, uh, show me any other of the materials you just want me to drag on this model for now. Um, yeah, throw on the uh, do the acrylic paint. Oh yeah, do no do, do the three D printed plastics. Like yeah, three D printed plastic. Yeah, let's make a little three D printed uh, shader ball. So I'm guessing we'll probably want to map the um, the material more like a flat. No, like, it's, uh, it should be fine. It should be fine. Well, I guess if you, yeah, if you wanted to make it look like it printed the whole thing top down, you might want to do like cubic. Yeah. 
That might still give you like different edges. We'll see if cubic works. Uh, that's pr yeah. from the front. That actually turned out really good. If you zoom in here. Oh yeah, it's almost oriented like the wrong way or something. Yeah. So I've been I I've tried the flat one too. So this this seems to work. It might be scaled a little inappropriately. We'll see. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, that works too. Like it, so here's all the little details. <laughs> there you go. We have to pre 3D print one of those. That'd be fun. That'd be cute. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's scroll down. You said acrylic. Oh yeah, the acrylic paint with all the detail on it. Uh, let's go back to UV mode. And yeah, uh, it's a little go. small. Yeah, I think you may have. It might be. Uh, oh yeah, that's a the lot. Tiles. Tiles are a little tiley. Let's zoom out. So I'm just going to go to tiles, and I'll do one more. They're, these are really high detail where you can get pretty close up on these. Um, now, in this scene file uh, is also displacement setup. So uh, again, we have a tutorial on this for Cinema 4D, how to set up displacement. Um, but if you've wanted to just have it in a scene ready to go, go grab this scene file, and you can see the Redshift tags are ready to go, which means if we zoom in, we should get all this displacement right on our our material and so that's actual geometry sticking out and if you want to see even more you can come down to displacement and turn this up so you could say 0.6 instead of 0.2 and you'll see it gets thicker and this is again real geometry this can slow down if you use it uh too much if you add too much detail but this is really a great little tip for ultra realistic close-ups where you just get all this beautiful geometry coming out um, Chad, give me a little art direction. Should we uh, put some color on this thing? Yeah, what's what's great about the acrylics is you can literally just unplug the base color map because it's just like a, a pretty, it's like a light gray. And you can just put whatever color you want into your material. So you can just unplug the base color and then just jump into your material and give it any color you want. Oh, I just do it direct. Yeah, I yeah you know. just do Yep. All right, let's see what we got here. Let me move this out of the way. Got the one monitor blues here. Uh, all right, so obviously I'm going to crank the saturation too much, but let's find a... We got our pink. We got, we got of course, we got to dial in our orangish red. Too red. There we mm, go. It's like a nice coral. I like that. Lovely. I'm I'm getting you know I'm getting more tasteful with my uh my my <laughs> orange spheres over the over the de over the years, Chad. To get some coral. You're honing, you're honing it in. So yeah, some salmon maybe, you know, <laughs> just <laughs> getting, getting more, getting more, uh, you, I, I'm learning not just the eight pack of Crayola crayon colors, you know, I'm really, <laughs> you're up to the one that has the sharpener in it. <laughs> yeah. It's up, I'm upgrading. Um, okay. So this is good. Let's, let's, uh, let's keep cranking this displacement till it breaks. Let's see how far this goes. Cause I, I love how gloopy this can get. I'm gonna go 1.3. Um, and uh oh that is nasty love it that's cool um awesome okay so uh let's let's do this um thanks for all the comments i see your comments here uh let's see here uh ah perfect question for exactly what i wanted to show before we jump into unreal um so they're asking about the nodes so you saw just now uh, out there in the internet land, when I opened up these materials, that it opened in the the newer Node uh, version of Cinema 4D's Node Editor, right? So this is this is in the last few years they've updated to this Node Editor. Now some people are uh, so excited to use this all day. Some people are still used to the uh, Expresso, more traditional Node Editor. The good news is. Um, as long as you update to the uh, latest pl plus library, which I think this has been here for about a year now, we now have this right here. So you can decide material type, Espresso or Node. So uh, for Simon, you, for, yeah, Simone, sorry, asking this, you can do this right here inside of Cinema 4D and you can choose between Node and Espresso. And then uh, it won't change any materials that you've already uh, assembled and, and pulled out of the library, but any new materials will be in the one that um, 
that you that you tell it. And I think there's also a setting in Cinema you you may want to kind of revert to if you want one or the other. We assume most people are using the new nodes, so just change this once, and then uh, just like anything in Cinema, save your default um, uh, layout, and then this this will stay exactly where you left it. Same goes for renderer and anything else you want to change. So hopefully that helps. Uh, anything I missed there, Chad? I know that's a feature we added uh, a while back. Yeah, I think uh, we should talk about ways of making that more, I guess. We get that question a lot. And I feel like we gotta we have to think about it on our end on how to make that a little bit more obvious that you can do that. Um, because I only use the new nodes. I don't I haven't used the espresso nodes in like a long time, it feels like. All right. I am let's see, I'm gonna pull one more material in and then we're gonna go to uh, let me get this plaster actually. I'm just gonna type it. Plaster. And then I'm going to go all the way up to all. There we go. Oh. So let's just put it on, on here since it already has the displacement built in. And just see, I just I just want to show everybody all the little details on this thing. So that's a little heavy handed. <laughs> it's so heavy. So I'm going to, first of all, scale this up. You can actually get away with scaling it up even more. Uh, the displacement might be still a little heavy. So you can go into the, into these that's looking a little bit better. Um, you can go into these, scroll down, and just kind of pull this back to taste. Uh, and also add more geometry if we need it. There's so much detail in there. You may want to, you may need to add more geometry, but I think this should be pretty close. Yeah, that's looking nice. A little weird on a round object, but uh, obviously this is also designed to, uh, you know, go on backdrops. So it looks really, really good. Um, you get a ton of little detail. So of course that's scaled too small, but you get the point. Yeah. All right. Before we run out of time, uh, I'm going to check for questions. I'm also going to swap to um, Unreal. So a lot of you've been asking, um, you know, what's this whole process like in other apps? So uh, I mentioned it earlier. We have assembly uh, plugins for Unreal, Blender, and Houdini that let you take anything from that online library pull it into any one of those apps and uh, it will automatically assemble the materials for you. So um, we're going to have more videos out about that soon, but I did want to take a moment on the live show and just show you guys in Unreal at least, which is a program I've been really having a lot of fun learning uh, how quick and easy this is. So you can see here in this scene, first of all, um, how good Unreal can look with, with like real time playback, which is always mind blowing to me. Um, but it's as easy as uh, going to uh, you uh, install your plugin. So we have a video on how to do that. Once you install the plugin, you can import a Grayscale Gorilla material. Uh, first of all, you could download any of those materials from the online library. You could import them using this plugin with one click. You just navigate to the folder of where you got it. And at least in Unreal, it will automatically assemble it for you, create an instance, and put it in your library. So here you can see if I jump out, it automatically builds a Grayscale Gorilla folder here. And oh, let me get rid of this comment here. Sorry about that. Thanks for the questions. We'll get um we'll get more uh, questions here in just a sec. Um, automatically creates a Grayscale Gorilla folder, and I, I went ahead and set up a filter called Material Instance Filter, and this will uh, just show you all the material instances. Um, I won't go into a full Unreal tutorial, but you do want to make sure you use material instances. And our plugin makes it right away. Our, our material importer makes them right away. And from here, you can just drag and drop this stuff right inside of Unreal. So in this case, I want to change uh, all of these to a different wood. I could drag those on, uh, and I could just drag and drop it here. Same with the background. You could just drag it in the background. Uh, and if you want things to be metal, you can go through all these. And what I love about playing in unreal is of course you get all this instant feedback right away you just drag it in and you hit play and you see it um we could of course zoom out and see a little bit wider angle um not my most artistic piece here so i want to zoom in a little bit more <laughs> i like the cropped in version better um but of course even all of these new materials let's go find some of the new stuff uh we have let's see here 
this is kind of everything. You could also search right here inside of Unreal. Uh, and I think we have some of these new performance fabrics. That's it. I knew there was something else. Knew was something <laughs> Jesus else. Christ, you scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Chad, performance <laughs> fabrics. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can talk about Dude, that. These are these are some of my faves and we didn't get, we didn't talk about it uh, earlier, but these are all ready to go. Um, if you haven't seen the performance fabrics, go check these out. These are amazing. Um, they just didn't fit into the kind of handmade story of that, but these are now a part of the library and these are uh, dozens of these performance fabrics that look really, really good. Uh, and obviously not on doodads, but more like cloth and stuff like that. In fact, speaking of, let's go do that. Sorry, I scared you, Chad. I got all excited. I knew there was something. Performance fabrics. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't believe we forgot those. I, I guess when you come out with as much stuff as we did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let, let's go into this one. So um, I took some of the new performance fabrics and put it on the the uh, the cloth Alembic file that I imported in Unreal, and this turned out really, really good. Um, and again, this is, uh, this is just the regular renderer here. Is like lumen, but even if, if you pr turn on path tracing, it looks even nicer. Um, you get some beautiful um, materials here. So I just want to give you a little preview of how easy this stuff is inside of other applications. Um, I know it's been a, a lot of stuff this year we've announced. This ability for you guys to use our assets and models and HDRIs and materials in uh, all 3D apps was such a big project. I wanted to kind of show this off a little bit. Um, but even from here, same thing, you don't have to recompile any materials. Uh, if you want to use them in path tracing, you just simply open them up in unreal and, uh, you scroll down and you pick the next one. So let's see what we got here. So we have this plush grid fabric, forget what collection that's from, but you can just drag it on top of your object and they'll all change. And if you want them to all be different, uh, of course you could open this up and you could see each one and in this case i'm just going to click some random stuff and pull it in let's see what styrofoam looks like on a on a cloth material let's try this weird plastic and i'm actually going to type in fabric just so we can get some normal looking ones and we hit play and we are set to go so it's really really simple really straightforward and the process is uh uh the, the same or similar in other 3d applications so uh, especially where we have our plug in there ready to go where you could just import these drag and drop them i kind of was thinking that plastic would look crappy but i kind of dig these x's i don't know why it's probably just orange I'll, i blame my orange all right um so let's ho let's hop in and answer any other questions. Chad, any last uh, material I should drag on top of these things? No, I think that's I think that's good. All right, let's see. I can't help myself. Let's do. Let's get rid of that blue one. Ooh, one more. <laughs> All right, that that looks fine. All right, so uh, let us know. We got a, a few extra minutes. We'll answer some questions, and then uh, it's holiday time, baby. Um, Oh, speaking of, can you actually bring up the uh, performance fabric uh, page uh, on our library? It's got the really cool looking um, uh, backpack. I think that'll help explain a little bit more about what those materials are. Yes. Let's see if I can navigate to them. Um, okay. They're probably under product viz. Mm hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Crater foam. Someday we'll have a sort by latest. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is there not they are. latest. Oh, here it is. Oh, yeah. baby. So, that like, performance fabric is just a lot of, like, you know, uh, wax canvas, nylon, ripstop, um, perforated uh, fabrics, um, just a lot of really great stuff for for clothes, for outdoor wear, for backpacks, just like really, really good, good fabric materials. Yeah, th these, these turn out really good. Um, this one I love this look, it's like got all these little patterns and displacement, all this stuff built into it. Look at this one. I love that. Yeah. So that's, that's you, that image is using, um, the paracord on the little, the little, uh, cords and yeah. Yeah, the, this has a couple other ones. You got some plastic, some paracord, 
Um, but a lot of the new performance fabrics, and I think, am I right in saying that the shoe render from a few months ago also had that in there? Yep. Yep. So that one, yep, that one right there. People were asking when we released the creator foams, like, hey, how do I get this, that material that's on on the the shoe there? So that's in the performance fabrics. I, I forget the name of it offhand, but um, it's pretty obvious based on that color. Yeah. But yeah. It actually is that color too. This one maybe? No, this one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Microfiber jersey light green. Go get it, folks. All right, let's see here. Oh, the sea now that there's that salmon sphere again. I love <laughs> it. What do you call this one? Pink? Yeah, this pink's fine. I don't mind calling it pink. That's fine. I'll wear I'll wear it. Let's go. Um, all right, let's um let's uh answer any last minute questions and um and then we'll talk about um uh you know new year's resolutions right right chad sure <laughs> you mean like eat eat a lot hang out with the dog <laughs> i think that's what we both have planned uh all right rebo thanks for thanks for being here uh also uh thanks to the grace go gorilla team for putting up all these links um and i'll uh I, I think a good way to end this like any end of the year and any end of anything is to encourage you to think about your year and look back at the projects that you really loved um and uh try to try to work with more ask ask those clients if they have friends <laughs> that that also do cool work and take a few of those things off of your calendar that you owe, you never look forward to if you have the ability to do it. It's a little um, thing I know a lot of uh, freelancers struggle with, just deciding what to do next year. So whether you're on a team working in a big project or working for yourself as a freelancer, think about those things that you want to do more of next year in your career, and of course with your family and your friends and and with other other uh, personal projects. Um, I'll also say a huge thank you to uh, Chad for you and the team for putting all this stuff together. You you guys have absolutely knocked it out of the park this year. Uh, give the team my love. They have absolutely crushed it. You guys, this is amazing stuff. So over 1,200 new assets have hit the library. On top of all of that, we made it compatible across the board. We added that node stuff. We added the. Um, we've also updated all of the Cinema 4D plugins to work in 2024. And we are just getting started, folks. So a lot of good suggestions already came through the Q&A that we are actively working on uh, for, for future versions of the online library and making all this stuff even easier for you guys, no matter where you do 3D. You know, we're seeing a trend where knowing one application and only using one 3D app um, is, is a, kind of going away in a lot of places. And people are starting to use the right tool for the right job and jumping between cinema and blender and unreal and we wanted to make sure that wherever you guys went that your favorite assets and the highest quality assets came with you so um huge thanks to you chad and, and the team for putting this together and a, a, a extra big thanks for all of you who are plus members who have joined us over the last year uh whether that's for a month to give it a a, a test and try all this stuff out uh even all you free members we see you Come try it. Uh, what I said this really early in, in the stream. If you're still here and you haven't signed up for a free account, it's completely free. Go sign up for free. You're going to get access to those scene files that you could try our stuff out in Cinema 4D. You're also going to get access to uh, the importer plugins so that you can uh, see how this stuff works inside of Blender, Houdini, and um, Unreal Engine. And give it a go. And if you want to try this stuff out and you're worried about compatibility with Maya or Keyshot or Moto or, uh, you know, whatever you're using, go grab those free ones and you'll see right away not only the quality that, that we bring, uh, but you could start using these things in your projects right away. Mm -hmm. So uh, make sure you go grab that. Um, as always, make sure you grab all the new stuff. We've already seen quite a few people asking for hard drives this year. With over 200 gigs of stuff, we get it. Uh, our hard drives are filling up too. <laughs> so uh, ask Santa for the hard drive, and uh, maybe you get maybe you get what you what you asked for here. Uh, I don't have any hard drives, so don't ask me. Um, <laughs> let's see here. 
All right, we got a uh, question for a tutorial for hair, hair and dynamics and stuff like that. That's a cool idea. Um, we got a Rob Visuals asking about old used wood scratch tabletops. I want to say we probably have enough stuff in the library for you to recreate this right now. So something we didn't talk a lot about today uh, is our surface imperfections. So a lot of this stuff, you can grab the veneers, I would say. We have a ton of beautiful wood um that is I, I that that i think is best in class like some of the best looking 3d wood i've ever seen is right here in the library go grab it and then go go fuck it up a bit <laughs> go get the surface imperfections <laughs> go not uh get some of these um uh add a little bit of displacement start to knock some of these edges off and make it beat up so we also have some finishes that are a little bit more messy. So a lot of the metals, painted metals, I'm thinking. Um, and so hopefully we have enough stuff here for you for you to get really dangerous in creating really messed up uh, assets. Any other tips for creating kind of screwed up stuff like that, Chad? Um, yeah, I mean, just, just really uh, play around with our surface imperfections, like you said. I mean, yeah, you, you pretty much covered it. But that is something that that we're looking at. Um, we might do some messier style materials next year. So keep an eye out. Ooh, a little teaser. Is that a teaser? Anything else you want to tease for next year? Um, let's see. I mean, obviously, we're going to keep bringing amazing, really high quality stuff useful stuff um yeah i can't really say too much but you'll definitely want to be a member join uh you know sign up for free pay attention to your email we we're really good about sending out notifications when new stuff drops so yeah just uh do that i guess stay tuned um yeah, and we we had a couple people asking about pricing so you can go in and you can grab uh, a month and get started right away. You can start using and downloaded. Un unlike our competition, uh, we don't have credits. We don't have limits. You can go in and start using all of this stuff right away. Uh, so you can pay for a month, go in, start using any of these uh, assets in any project you have going right now or on January 2nd when you get back. Um, I'll also say if you want to pay for a year, you basically save I don't know. Let's see. It's it, for the price of seven months, you can get a ye a full year, and you're off to the races. So all of our everything we've cr ever created to help you guys do that. Um, and I'll also say this. I know it's the end of the year. I know a lot of us are learning stuff. We also have educational discount. So find that on the site as well. And of course, if you're on a team and you work with a big team and you want to make sure that your entire team has assets uh, that you can share and you could you know bring and. Uh, pull across any file and anything you're working on. We have team packages that allow you to do just that for you and your team, not to worry about li uh, any licensing or versioning or anything like that, and just have instant access to all of this stuff for your next big project. So hit up the teams uh, if that sounds like you, or if you're one of those freelancers that are paying for this on your own and you think your team should do it, why don't you do us a favor and yourself a favor and go tell your boss to pay for this thing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You, and then and then now you're now we're going and if you're the boss well you know the value of working fast uh we try to keep this affordable for you guys and make sure you have everything you need to save time uh and get more done so you could either get home earlier or take on more work and make more money that's what we're here to help you guys do so uh let's leave it at that happy holidays merry christmas to each and every one of you hope uh no matter where you are you get some time for some family some friends and hey if you don't like your family i hope you have time to yourself and to go learn something and to be thankful for this year and everything we've all created. Thank you so much for being here for yet another live show. Oh my gosh, is the dog being cute? I'm trying I'm trying to bring him over here to say goodbye. Moose. Okay, well hold on. I'm 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 getting out for the dog cameo. We got to get a dog out cuz I hear that's what people on the internet want to see. They don't want to see me in a hat. Um Vitas, thank you for that. Get some food materials. Cheers. Rob, thank you. KG, thank you. I'm going to go click on stuff. Thank you. Kent, awesome. Good to see you. Look, we're just dragging this out to see if the dog made it. Oh, Jake, you got this. <gasps> Buddy, look how big he is. I know. Hi, bud. Good to see you. Oh, my goodness. This is 
this is how you end an internet video right here, Chad. Nice work, bud. <laughs> Thank you, you Grace. Rascal. What a cutie. Thank you, Grace Gill Gorilla team, uh, for being here and helping with all the links. Thank you for everything uh, this entire year. Uh, it's been quite a year for us and a lot of stuff we worked on. So I'm incredibly proud of what you guys have, have pulled off and, and so excited as, as we have so many new members joining us here at the end of the year. Thank you guys. So as always, thank you from all of us here at Grayscale Gorilla. We hope you have a wonderful, wonderful ho holiday. Uh, uh, Chad, anything else you'd like to add before we wave and we say goodbye? Nope. Thank you, all of our members. We love you. Uh, my team, everybody here at Grayscale Gorilla, just happy holidays. Enjoy yourselves and see you next year. Amazing. Well said. Bye, everybody. Happy holidays. <laughs>